hey, mathematicians, uh, I thought we could just do a couple of examples that are sort of I consider almost like algebra probability examples um, using some fundamental ideas of independence. So let's let's just say, for instance, it's just a normal kind of question where I gave you some, let's call this number one, right? Let's say I told you that the probability of some event A was 0.3 and the probability of some event B equals 0 0.2, and my goal was to find the probability of A union B, right? Um, okay. Well, why aren't you telling me? Uh, it's not because I can't hear it. It's because this is not enough information. If we were to try to figure this out, we, we, we know that if we drew a little Venn diagram that most of the time um, that a, events A and B will intersect, right? They have some kind of intersection that I could shade in right here. Isn't this cute? Whoa, can you see that? I can see that, right? Um, they have an intersection. And, and the smallest this intersection could possibly be, we wonder, what is that intersection? If, if the intersection was zero, a intersect B equals zero, then the union, uh, you can't even read that, that says zero over there, right? Uh, then the, the, the union would be 0 0.5, 0 0.3 plus 0.2. But um, what if what if event at B was entirely in set A, right? Then the union would just be 0.3. What if we took this whole circle and we moved it inside here, right? Then, then the union would just be 0.3. So it's going to be some number between 0.3 and 0.5, but how do we know what it is? Well, we need another fact. Let's say, let's just suppose, for instance, that in this case we knew that A and B are independent. Well, if that's the case, that's enough information because all that, that that's enough to know what this intersection is. I know that if the two events are independent, then the probability of A times the probability of B will give me the probability of A intersect B. Hooray! So let's just plug some numbers in. Um, I knew that uh, probability of A was 0.3. I knew that the probability of B was 0.2, as that means that their intersection should be 0 0.06, right? And that's the number that goes right there, right? And if that's the case, then how do I figure out what A union B is? Well, I can just use the general addition rule, right? Um, I know that by the general addition rule, the, the probability of A union B will be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B, right? So let's plug some numbers in. That's simply um, 0.3 plus 0.2 minus 0.06, which gives me 0.44. And that, my friends, is my answer, right? That's all I need to know, just that fact of independence. Now, if they weren't independent, there's who knows what this union could be. It could be anything, right? Um, like I said, it could be something as small as uh, the union could be as small as 0 0.3 could, or it could be as large as 0 0.5. All right, let's do another problem. Let's do, let's do something more basic. Let's try to decide if two events are independent, right? So are events A and B independent? Events are independent? Yes or no? I don't know. Yes or no, right? You tell me. Well, let's get some facts. Let's say I told you that PA was equal to 0.7 the probability of B equaled 0 0.5. Um, are these events independent? Well, that's not enough. Tell me some third fact. Let's say that I told you, um, let me give you a very straightforward fact, that the probability of A intersect B equals 0 0.4. Are these events independent? You should very quickly realize the answer is absolutely no. How could they be independent? How do you know? Well, if they were independent, then the probability of A intersect B should be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And I can see very quickly that 0 0.7 times 0 0.5 uh, is equal to 0 0.35, and that's not equal to 0 0.4, right? And therefore, that says 0.4, that's ugly as heck, 0 0.4. Um, then since these are not equal, they can't be independent. Another way we could check is by seeing if, I'll use a different color so you can see. Let's check to see if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given Oops, excuse me, er, er, given B. Um, well, let's check. The probability of A given B would be the intersection, 0 0.4, divided by B, 0 0.5, which is 0 0.8. Is 0 0.8 equal to 0 0.7? Not in this universe. It's two proofs that know these two events can't be independent. So that's nice. Um, all right, let's do a third problem very quickly, right? One, uno mas. Um, let's say I know, this is number three, 
that the probability of some event A is 0 0.3. I don't know what's with me and A being 0.3. That's kind of boring. Let's say I told you the probability of B given A, uh, that's fun, is 0 0.4. And, um, and let's say I told you that A and B are independent. Right, they are independent. Um, then what, my friends, what is the probability of B? Let's figure out that first. What would be the probability of B? Well, oh, seems like I'm going to have to do a bunch of algebra, right? Um, uh, well, I know the probability of B given A is the probability of A and B over the probability of A. And, um, okay, so I know probability of A, uh, ooh, probability of A and B. They're independent, so that should be the probability of A times the probability of B. Um, probability of A, wait a second, P, A, P, A, those cancel. The probability of B given A is simply the probability of B. That, that is the answer. So the probability of B is, what, 0 0.4. I didn't have to do anything at all. As soon as I knew they were independent, as soon as I see this fact, I should immediately know that this is also the probability of B, right? That is based on that fundamental definition of independent events, that the probability of A uh, given B is equal to the probability of A, right? Now, you might not entirely believe me here with this. How do we know that this is sufficient? Well, let's Let's, this is actually really the definition of, of independent events, right? This property that the probability of A times the probability of B equaling the probability of A and B is really just a property based on this definition. But let's use this thing that it's more intuitively obvious to us because that's based on examples we've seen and prove that this has to be the case, right? All right, well, let's, let's prove it. How would I prove it? Um, well... Let's just divide both sides by B. Uh, then when I divide both sides by B, B cancels here and I get the probability of A. Well, that's exciting. But what do I have here? I have the probability of A and B divided by probability of B. Does that formula look familiar? Oh, what the heck? Holy moly. Giddy the heck up. That's precisely the definition of the conditional probability of A given B. Boom! And almost no work at all we showed from this thing that we use all the time that makes sense to us that, that this has to be the case as well. In fact, from this you could also show that the probability of A could be equal to the probability of A given not B. That would be a little bit more work, but we can prove stuff like that as well too. It's good times. Um, anyway, I hope this is very helpful to you. Um, have a beautiful day. I hope you had fun doing whatever the heck it was you were doing. Peace and love. Giddy the heck up.